TRAPS is a disease which historically was difficult to treat. We've known from small studies and case reports that our treatment with IL-1 blockade in the form of anakinra had been very helpful, but there hasn't been a formal trial of any new agents in it. So canakinumab, uh, the study is the first formal trial of this in TRAPS. Um, and this was a phase two open labeled single arm study with 20 patients, both adults and children, who uh, had a washout period of previous treatment and then received canakinumab. And the first aim of the study was to look at the uh, response at day 15, so two weeks after treatment, and also at the number of patients who'd responded at day eight. And then the study went on to look at the duration of response for patients dosed every four weeks for uh, four months. Then there was a withdrawal period to see whether they, the time taken for them to relapse of up to five months. And then they were further treated for a further 24 months to look at the stability of their response. So of these uh, 20 patients, 19 had had a response, what was defined as a complete or near complete response by day 15. All patients maintained a response during the four month treatment period. All patients relapsed in the follow up period when the treatment was withdrawn with a median time to relapse of 91.5 days. And all patients on retreatment again achieved their complete or almost complete response and maintain that very stably throughout the treatment period. This was essentially a look-see to assess response uh, with a plan to further studies which were placebo controlled, which are now ongoing, that's the cluster study. So this was a um, pre, prior to that, and it's very reassuring to show that you get disease responses to this. And although uh, always when it label, studies are open label, there is a degree of uh, believing that you are of course encouraging your patients to feel better, but because we followed it up also with measures of their acute phase response, so their liver response to inflammation, those normalised too, uh, and feeling better doesn't make you normalise your liver response. You do have to have had a proper physiological response to drug to do that. What this study has shown in, is that in 20 patients of whom six were children and 14 were adults with mutation confirmed traps and really fairly nasty disease, we'd taken patients either with recurrent or chronic disease and of these patients one was a genuine new diagnosis and the others had all already been on biologics. We've shown that a follow-up of a maximum of 2.9 years, two years nine months, uh, has maintained completely stable disease control in these patients. Uh, so we've had good long-term disease control with our one beta blockade, and we've had really a very benign side effect profile, which is pretty much what you'd expect with canakinumab uh, from the other auto-inflammatory diseases we've used this drug in. Uh, these patients were really real life patients, so three of our 20 had AA amyloidosis, so there was concerns about their renal function. Our oldest patient was 77 at the start of the study, had AA amyloidosis, had known bronchiectasis, so was at risk of chest infections, also had retroperitoneal fibrosis, which she had previous renal stents, so it was a fairly complicated patient to treat and had remained really very well throughout the study and now on long-term drug also remains well. So even treating pretty complex patients with good going comorbidity, we've done very well using canakinumab as the cytokine blocking agent in this disease and have maintained very stable disease control with a very reassuring safety profile. To date, the follow-up has looked extremely reassuring and this has been very well tolerated both by our adult and paediatric patient group. It looks very good. We have getting on for three years data reported in this study and in fact we have a bit longer because the patients have continued for longer. That is great. You always have to acknowledge some degree of caution. This is a paediatric disease that presents early in life. We are hoping that we are going to restore normal life expectancy and normal quality of life to these patients. And therefore we're looking at expecting to give 80 years of treatment.
change in treatment of the systemic auto-inflammatory diseases with the ability to block interleukin-1 beta cannot be overstated. These used to be appalling diseases where we really had very little to offer and we didn't much like our treatment choices. And essentially now we say this is going to be fine. We have a drug that will work, we have a drug that is remarkably safe given what it does and we would expect you to have an entirely normal life, we would expect the kids to have completely normal experience, most of our adults are in full-time work and our difficulty is now getting them back for follow-up visits because they're too busy with normal life to find it easy to come back and see us and that is really the definition of therapeutic success. And when you look at the patient's reported quality of life, uh, this is now pretty much the same as what the normal US healthy population reports as their quality of life.